welcome to Romance Isn't Dead, episode 18, Soulmates yep. and Other Assorted Soul Bonds. We're I'm now sorry. legal in the UK. <laughs> well, in the US, um, you can um, smoke and you can vote, but you cannot drink. You can also join the military and uh, serve your country, but you cannot have a beer. I'm not even going to touch that one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're legal enough to carry an assault weapon in the name of Uncle Sam, but he does not trust you with a beer. That's okay. It's 16 over here. You can get married and have children, but you can't vote, drink, or smoke. You can only get married in the United States at 16. I think that that number might vary by state, but you have to have your parental permission. So, it's 16. And I know this because one of my best friends got married at 17, the summer before our senior year in high school. Okay. And for our U.S., for our non-U.S. listeners, we were 17 our entire senior year. So, it's the 12th year in, in school, and that yeah. would be the year before you go to college. Somewhat unsurprisingly, she did not go to college until much later, after that divorce, and another one. <laughs> and another one. No, she went to she went to college during that final relationship. Yep, yep, yep. So now she has a bachelor's degree, and um, that I, I should say university for British listeners or folks that aren't U.S. Yeah. listeners who went to university. So, yeah. And so she was, I want to say, almost 40 when she finished her bachelor's. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. So I, I'm absolutely not being critical, by the way. Um, it, but the whole uh, getting getting married when 17 did not work out especially well for her. But um, it always works out in romance novels. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. It doesn't always work out because quite often if they got married that young, they tend to be moving into their second relationship if it's a Mills and Boone. Well, and, they, and their ex is normally um, a psycho or died or was abusive or... It didn't work out because they cheated. Just not, and I'm not generalizing. I'm going, these are the reasons why you end up with the, in their mid 20s, stroke early 30s, finding love again. Mm -hmm. That's a different kind of, of uh, I guess I want to say Mills and Boone, but I'm not sure that's the one I want to say. But okay, well. Today, we're not we are, to talk about that. yeah, we're not here to talk about that today. We are here to talk about something else today. We are here to talk about soulmates, and I love the concept of soulmates. Do you believe yeah, in soulmates? I'm single, but soulmates is a concept, though. I believed in them when I was. I think, I mean, how many people don't? when they're sort of 15, 16, and they see their friends pairing off and their friends are talking about how oh, we were meant for each other and everything else. Yeah, how, many, yeah. how many don't think, oh, I'd love to find the, the person that was made for me? Because you grow up with that belief that there is someone out there for you. Sure. I'm thinking, careful, there may be smoke, that... <laughs> That soulmates don't always have to be romantic, though. Mm. Certainly in the concept of this podcast, they're romantic. But in the concept or in the, in the uh, world... Real world? Of, uh, the real world, uh, in the world of Harry Potter, even. Soulmates are not necessarily romantic. So mm -hmm. maybe we should... Let's discuss non-romantic -soul, non soulmates real quickly. Um before we started, I mentioned that Voldemort and Harry were soulmates. Obviously, not in a romantic sense, 
because unless you, you read some really odd fanfic unless you read some very specific fanfic um they're not romantically involved um certainly canonically speaking they are not romantically involved is that fair no. yeah that's um, fair i would simply say with regards to this that 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 i think soulmates um people can be really close friends and be soulmates, right? I mean, so that best friend of mine that got married when she was 17, mm-hmm. she and I have been friends since middle school. So we've been friends since we were 12. When you've been friends with somebody for 30 plus years, there's a certain element of soulmate there, right? Like you, oh, yeah. you, you, you get to know people really, really well. And I think that, so for me, soulmates don't necessarily have to be, um, a romantic kind of thing. And, and I see soulmates, um, in my fiction as being a romantic thing, but I don't think they have to be. Unless they're Harry and Voldemort. Yeah. Well, and, um, in real life, I think that soulmates are often friends um, because a romantic relationship is not possible for them. Like, I think you develop soulmates in real life as opposed to you're born with a mark or, you know, a man tries to kill you and gives you a lightning bolt on your forehead. Was that wrong? Yeah, you see, no, I, I agree with you completely. That's the thing with Harry and Voldemort. There is a bond there and it is a very, very deep bond. Whether it's a good one or not is another matter entirely. But they have a connection. Right. I mean, they can read each other's minds, which is pretty scary, especially when you consider what's going through Voldemort's all the time. Right. And he has a part, of, Harry has a part of, Voldemort in him right so there is right. going to be that integral connection right yeah I would agree so that so theirs is theirs is a um the sort of soul bond that isn't necessarily appropriate for a romance conversation but at the same time there is a connection there that is undeniable mm-hmm mm-hmm I would agree I would agree so um that puts paid to to that right i mean we can revisit it certainly um now you and i were talking about soulmates soul bonds and such soul marks um and you were looking at just for kicks and giggles at mcu fanfic what were you seeing um well i looked at a specific character involved in soulmate fan fiction because for anybody that um knows me i have a connection to Darcy Lewis in many ways I think that I'm kind of like her though much older and I even named my cat after her but that's neither here nor there so I was looking at um, MCU soulmate fan fiction with a specific character involvement and on AO3 Mm -hmm. there were 1054 fanfics with the soulmate bond whether it was um, platonic soul marks um disappointment or anything else there were a thousand and fifty four of them and i was when we started this conversation i was looking through about page eight of fifty two mm-hmm. 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 there's wow. a lot of, there there are a lot it's a very popular trope which is what we were coming to when we were thinking about what we were going to talk about today. It was a trope that is incredibly popular across fandom and across um, novels because a couple of the um, Psy Changeling mm-hmm. novels are soulmate, yep. if not most, in, if not the majority of them. I think they all are, really. Yeah. I mean, except they deal with maybe one. Yeah, it's that connection that I suppose in a way you call it many would call it love at first sight Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just the way that we now talk about it we we think about it in terms of oh they're my soulmate Mm -hmm. well um the other nalini singh when i think about her uh when i think about her guild hunter series there is 
I'll, spoilers. Um, <laughs> one of her characters is a vampire and his wife was killed when he was a mortal. Um, and it was a violent, terrible death and uh, by an angel and uh, vampires. And so then he becomes an, a vampire. And um, a thousand years later, he runs across this woman and he's um, fascinated by her. Absolutely fascinated by her. And um, he sees pictures on her wall of the site of their homestead. His homestead I've, with his wife. I've read another book like that. I and think it was he, a Cressley Cole. Yeah. He lost it. Like, just lost it. Who? Why did you go there? Blah, blah, blah. Because it was, it's well off the beaten pack, path. And she said, you know, I don't know. I just, I just, something was calling me there. And, um, and so anyway, they sort it out and figure out that she is his wife reincarnated, which I would make the argument is very much a soulmate thing. That, oh, I'd agree with, I'd they agree. To, they had to be together and so on and so forth. And yeah. Well, there have been movies like it, haven't there? There have been movies about that soulmate connection. I mean, in, um, I was talking with my cousin about the Matrix, which is 20 years old this year, which is quite scary. Mm-hmm. And Neo and Trinity. Mm-hmm. Soulmates. She was destined to be with him and he was destined to be with her. And they were both destined to die. Okay, sorry, I'm not a big fan. Of <laughs> not a big fan of the way the Matrix ends because it, I, I don't. It, I don't even think about the last film in any yeah. way or form. The first one is for me, and that's the one that turned twenty this year. Not the two sequels, one of which I actually walked out of the cinema halfway through watching. Um, we won't go there, but there are a wow. lot. Of, yeah, I, I have. I really did not like it. Um, there are so many um, different ways to handle mm-hmm. the soulmate thing. In movies, it tends to be um, love at first sight or a des- they, they are destined to be together and someone, like the Oracle, tells them that this is their fate. So we could use that as a nice little segue onto how it's dealt with in mythology because mm-hmm. you were talking earlier about the red string. Yes, Um A lot of Star Wars fans have have started talking about, well, I say a lot, a certain subset of the Star Wars fandom has started talking about this because uh, last two, three years ago, when Ryan Johnson, who directed The Last Jedi, which was the last Star Wars movie to come out uh, in the saga films, he tweeted out a couple of times a picture of a piece of red string or red thread. And so that, of course, sent folks, especially in the Raylo fandom, on a search. Well, it turns out that in Eastern mythology, the red string of fate is um, the t- soulmates are tied together and with the red string of fate. And no matter what you do, you will be with this person. And, you know, you think you can change it, but you can't. So the string can get tangled, knotted up, uh, drawn apart, but it can never be broken. And so those people are, without a doubt, soulmates. Uh, and it's fated, right? So this whole mm-hmm. idea is that soulmates are fated to be together. And in this case, obviously, as a member of the Raylo fandom, I am convinced that uh, Ben Solo and Ray are fated to be together. And so that's how that works. And and I find it interesting and compelling, particularly in fiction. I think in real life, I wouldn't find it as compelling or... Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine I, I find how it a disastrous little, it would be? I, I find it a little uh, uh, invasive that you know my choice is taken away from me. And in and, and, and some, I think, Chinese mythology, uh, people who try to uh, buck the system, buck mm-hmm. the red string because they want their own freedom of choice, uh, they do something to try and avoid it and it never works. Uh, but they wind up choosing this person of their own volition anyway and then realize at the end, oh my gosh, this is a person I've been tied to for years. So, so yeah, that's the red string of fate and that is a soul soulmate kind of thing. 
And then you had more Western examples, right? Yeah, I right? have more Western. Well, you have the Fates in mm. Greek and Roman mythology, mm. and you have the Norns, who are obviously in Norse mythology, and they weave tapestry, mm. and they are weaving it with string. One measures the string, one weaves the string, one cuts the string, and mm. threads get entangled in the tapestry, and they are meant to be together there their lives are connected in some way so it's not necessarily a romantic connection it can be as we were talking platonic it can be they are their lives are entrenched in some kind of mystery that they need to resolve Mm -hmm. but they are tied together and that is again it's the fates Mm -hmm. it is your destiny to be connected to this person so you are on a level connected by your soul's because mm-hmm. that's what they're dealing with. They're not dealing with, they're, well, they are dealing with your life, but it is at the soul level. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you are soulmates in some way or other. You're soul bound, I think, is probably a more accurate mm-hmm. way to term it. So mythology deals with it as well. And I think that is what a lot of um, fiction actually focuses on. It focuses on in some indirect way the mythology of it all Mm -hmm. so oh I dreamt about you or um I saw you I glimpsed you across a room and I can't stop thinking about you it sounds a little bit psychopathic and stalkery but at the same time it's that instant connection that you're feeling with someone that you're destined to have a connection to right 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 okay so um I'm gonna go a little bit off of our non-existent script here um can you think of any any um fiction that you've read that soulmates pop up for instance i find a lot of it in lenny singh's books when i think about it and i really enjoy her books so that tells me i really do like this whole notion of destiny and people fated to be together i've even tried to write something about that so uh there's that have do you have any authors that you've noted? Well, I was that? thinking I was thinking and I'm looking at my one of my bookcases right now and I'd say Cressley Cole okay. deals with it. And so to a degree does Lindsay Sands in her Carpathians? No, the Arginos. She writes yeah. the Arginos. And they deal with um, because of course the Arginos are a serious they are vampires. And then you've got Cressley Cole with her vampires and demons and they have a soulmate connection well now christine feehan's books the carpathians oh, yeah. are definitely yeah, um and then you've also got um you've also got um most of her books are soulmate like you mm. literally she calls these people soulmates right you're my soulmate yep. you're the one who gives me color blah 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 so there's christine feehan so if you like that trope she is she is your girl um so definitely there and you know what um i see it in um stephanie lawrence the sinister i haven't series. read any so um, the Sinster series, uh, she talks about Sinster wives and they're the ones that are able to, you know, tame a Sinster man and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, she, she never calls it that, but it's there. But her novels are a totally different realm. I think it's far yeah. more, it's far more obvious in the paranormal or supernatural novels because they can go to the extreme of saying something that sounds more otherworldly right absolutely but I was bringing her up because it's not a genre that you necessarily think of soulmates Mm. in that was why I brought her up yeah and I thought yeah and I thought of another one actually Kelly Armstrong's later women of the other world her entire series that started with Bitten and Stolen about Elena and the werewolves. Mm-hmm. They, I think, Elena is clearly searching for her soulmate and she's made a werewolf by her soulmate because he senses that she's his forever. Okay. And for some reason, his name's completely blanked out of my mind. Clay. 
that's it thank you very much but they are for me i think they are uh very much soulmatey because they're searching for the person who understands them and who they are Mm -hmm. and i think that's a lot for me that is a lot of of what I would if I were still looking what I'd be looking for in a soulmate whether they be friend or partner Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely that makes sense so I think we can safely say that soulmates are a trope that sort of cross cross boundaries yeah there there it's and I think that honestly at least a lot of the romance that I prefer makes use of that specific trope. Um, and that may be one of my favorite tropes. What do you think? Mm. Is it one of yours? Do you like, you, yeah, no. I like, I like reading it in fan fiction. Okay. I have to be honest. I, I don't go searching out for it, but there are, as I said, I was talking and there's a hundred, a thousand and fifty four of them. And that's current count. It probably will go up in the next week. But it's not something I, I mean, I read a lot of paranormal. In fact, we've done a comparison of our bookcases before now, and mm-hmm. they are in some degree quite similar. And I would probably go as far as to say um, To the Moon and Back has an element of soulmate about it. Which one is that? The Jill Mansell one that we read a few weeks ago. Because he spies her in a restaurant Mm -hmm. and he can't stop thinking about her. And their lives are inexplicably entwined. Mm -hmm. But she ends up working for him through completely random circumstances, Mm -hmm. which is almost like fate. Kismet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is this is a trope, whether you think about it or not, is very, very, very prevalent in romance novels. Yeah. And Shakespeare loved it. He did indeed. He did indeed. Uh, And if Shakespeare loved it, man, you know, (laughs) it's going to be everywhere. (laughs) It's going to be everywhere. Okay. so I the reason we did that this week, right, is because um Ray's libraries are rubbish. Ray's not library <laughs> is indeed rubbish. It's not rubbish. It's just it's just slow. Any any updates yet? Uh, according to yesterday, still haven't arrived in the library. We are. I ordered um, just to let everybody know we were talk. We, you were probably expecting us to talk this week about Wolf Rain. Um, however. <laughs> I reserved it from my library. I am number three on the list. And my library um, covers an entire county. And if you're not in the UK, an entire county is probably, uh, well, uh, putting it this way, there's over 100,000 people that live in my town. And the county is a lot bigger than that. And there are, they ordered two copies of Wolf Rain in hardback and it didn't get released until two days after it got released in the US and my library still hasn't got any copies and at this point I'm gonna have to reread the book (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's gonna be a hardship isn't it actually no there you go so (laughs) it's really gonna be a hardship in as much as it's on my kindle and my kindle's face is cracked right now so let's not talk about it right now (laughs) But uh, there is nothing I can do to change that. Unfortunately, our libraries work at a snail's pace. They suffer from um, severe funding issues. So actually, the fact that they have got this book coming in at all is a miracle on its own. Um, But I am still on the waiting list, which is something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm number three because two more people have added themselves to the list now. So there are two people after me. But I will probably read it in a couple of days and take it back, so there won't be any worry with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're still hoping, we're now hoping for Wolf Rain for next week. And um, mm-hmm. if it becomes apparent that we're not going to be able to do Wolf Rain, what would, should we, uh, should we have a backup book or no? What do you think? I think we should have a backup book because there are still two people ahead of me on the list and the book hasn't arrived yet. Okay, so what's our backup book? Well, it's your choice. Is it my choice? Well, Wolf it Frame is, is my choice. I thought yes, Wolf, Wolf Frame, Frame was my choice. 
Yeah, Wolf Brain is your choice, but the backup should also be yours. Um, okay, fine. We'll do the Sinsters. There you go. We'll do the Sinsters. Um, I would say let's go with um, let's go with this the, an oldie, uh, Devil's Bride. Devil's oh, I've Bride. I've got that one. Well, there I've you got go. that one because that was one that was on Amazon for two ninety nine. There you go. In a book of three. There you go. It's an oldie. It's one of the. It's the first one, isn't it? It's the first Sinster. Actually, I think I actually maybe prefer some of the newer. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's talk about it. So, Devil's Bride by Stephanie Lawrence, who I believe is from New Zealand. And it is a Regency, not paranormal. But it and still has elements of soulmates in it. It does indeed. And... Um, I guess we'll just try to let get the word out on Twitter if if Ray gets her hands on Wolf Rain. <laughs> if the library comes through, I'm keep I'm rooting for you, library. Um, I'm not holding out much hope, but I am rooting for you. Um, if it does come in, we will post it on Twitter, so you know where to find us. We're on we're at ISN Romance on Twitter, mm -hmm. and we post pretty regularly. Okay. Not as regularly as we did, but we do post regularly. And of course And and last week we had some technical difficulties in as much as I live in the deep south and my air conditioning went out in my house and couldn't turn the fans off. It was a very, very loud buzz in the background. And when I say fans, I mean I mean a shop fan. And I, I couldn't turn that off because I didn't I just couldn't force the rest of my house to roast and I couldn't close my door because then I would roast if I left the fan on. So it just, it just didn't work out. We actually did try, but it did, did not work out. So we apologize. We apologize, but that's okay. We came back with number 18 today, despite other technical difficulties with the library. And um, <laughs> we have a plan because we're here for you. We're here for you. Yeah, we are. And we are trying very, very hard. To... <laughs> oh, it's just so bad. But at least we got to talk about soulmates today. And yeah. we didn't even mention half of the tropes that there are within the soulmate trope. Well, you know, I, I think that's kind of a fun thing, though. I mean, we can kind of revisit soulmates as we as we continue to read like maybe we should look at okay how are these people soulmates are they soulmates um is it the soulmate trope or whatever that might be kind of fun to do and have some consistency there of a hmm but i think this trope is super super um prevalent it's your favorite isn't it it is it's your all-time favorite trope i am a soulmate junkie <laughs> so, anyway all right ray are we ready to sign out uh, I believe we are. So I'm going to say, keep on searching for your happily ever after. With the soulmate. Okay. Yeah. And I would remind you <laughs> that romance isn't dead. It's alive and well on your bookshelf with your soulmate.